Welcome to JICF Midweek Chats, a series where we talk about topics that are relevant in light of the unique time we're living in. Each week, we'll have a conversation that centers on questions or challenges that arise over the current situation we're facing. Our Midweek Chats seek to shed light on and encourage you in the midst of this difficult season. As we navigate these unprecedented times, we hope and pray that you will be blessed and encouraged through this weekly series. Welcome to our first midweek chats. My name is Hendra Suhartanto, and I'm here with my wife, Mimi. Mm-hmm. We live in an unusual and unprecedented time at the moment. We are bombarded by news. Some of them are hoax, like coronavirus is airborne, for example. Mm-hmm. And that creates a lot of fear and even panic in some of us. Well, our work routine is disrupted. Our children's schooling is disrupted. Even our social life is disrupted. Many of our expat friends receive travel advisory from their government, and some of them are really confused right now what to do, whether they should repatriate or whether they should stay. Some of them that have to have their visa or uh, resident permit extended, they have to leave the country and come back. And when they come back, they have to go through 14 days of self-confinement. Now, all members of the family have to stay home and work from home. Like, you're working from home for the last uh, more than one week. And Gabby also stay home and working from home and uh, suddenly both of you are accompanying me working at home (laughs) and all of a sudden also moms and dads uh, parents of all school age children suddenly become homeschoolers all around the world and that creates in itself stress and fatigue and frustration at home as I talk to moms uh, many of them are overwhelmed with the task of teaching their children at home and having to cook and having to clean and all the uh, daily routine. That's right. I guess this situation presented itself and for us, we can respond in perhaps two different ways or more. Uh, One would be with fear and sometimes even panic. And the other one is having a cavalier attitude. What is cavalier? Well, um, it is uh, an attitude where it is careless, like saying, well, whatever that's going on is never going to affect me, and I don't fear, I don't care about what's going on around me. But then that's also not the right uh, way or the, the right response. It reminds me of the passage in Scripture where Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, and the devil said to him uh, from a high place, throw yourself down. If you are the son of God, God definitely will send his angels concerning you and he will, he will not let your uh, foot strike a rock. And uh, Jesus said clearly that do not put the Lord your God to test. Even though God can save us, even though God can protect us, uh, we are not to test God. So I think that should not be the way we, we respond. At the same time, God wants us to have faith in Him. Hebrew 11, 6 says that uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And Abraham considered righteous because of his faith. And I guess we need to have wisdom to exercise our faith um, in such a way that we don't test God with our faith. And that make me think that I truly appreciate the leadership of GICF when the elders made the difficult decision to cancel the Sunday service on March 15. Now looking back, I think uh, the elders really made the right decision, uh, the right choice, very wise. Um, And GICF, I think, is one of the uh, international churches that made the announcement early to cancel the Sunday service. Well, another way people respond is with fear and, as I said, panic. Uh, Scripture also addressed that. There's 160 times in the Bible when we find the phrase, fear not. Mm -hmm. So I guess God knows that we are prone to fear. Mm -hmm. And when he says fear not, he's saying that not just do not fear, but 
look at God, look at me, look at my character, uh, that I am sovereign and I'm good and I'm fully in charge and fully in control. Mm -hmm. In a time such as this, I guess our theology is being tested. Who do we see God will determine our responses during this difficult time? That's right. And as you said, Hendra, 160 times the Bible said, fear not. And I think it is only possible when we truly know who God is and His character. And that will give us assurance that God is with us. Although in this life, we will face many troubles. Right. Yeah. Well, in talking to people, and uh, I'm sure you are, you are uh, experiencing this too, what do people really fear um, when, when it comes to the situation right now? One of them is fear of financial losses. Mm -hmm. Some people yeah. are thinking about whether they will lose their job if the situation persists. Some people who are business owners, they are currently very much edgy and nervous, uh, perhaps thinking through, will I have to file bankruptcy if this uh, situation continues? Uh, sales is affected and there's payroll to fulfill. And at the personal level, many people are experiencing financial loss personally. If you own stocks and maybe mutual funds, at least you will see your portfolio losing perhaps at least 30% of its value, at least on the book. At the personal level, I also experience worry and anxiety. Uh, last week on Monday, uh, a week ago on, on Saturday, I find out that the uh, gallon water in our dispensers was only half and we don't have a supply of water. And then I called the shop that where I usually buy the gallon water and then she said that Oh, we ran out. The factory has not sent the new supplies. So I prayed, asking God to provide for us enough water gallon. And then Monday came and I became more anxious and more worried. And even asking my driver to look around at the supermarket or, or the wet market to find the gallon water and he couldn't find. But at 2 p.m., uh, the lady, the shop lady called uh, WhatsApp me and said that, hey, the shipment of water has come so we can deliver it to you. So God provide uh, our needs of, of water. And at it, when I receive that WhatsApp news, I feel that God is saying, don't worry, I will take care of you. Even if you don't have to ask your driver to look for water in a market or supermarket, I will still provide for you. So... God will provide and uh, he has proven himself to be uh, true. And then on that Monday when I was worrying, when I was um, anxious, in the morning I already kind of like promised myself, lunchtime today I want to buy lunch for a Gojek driver. Uh, and then I need to send food to my mom's house through Gojek also. And I forgot all about that until 3 p.m. I remember, oh no, I forgot to... Uh, send all those uh, food for my mom and to buy lunch for a Gojek driver. So when I focus, when I worry, I tend to uh, just focus on myself. I cannot think of other people. I guess that's the nature of anxious and worry. Right. We always focus on self. So talking about fear and anxiety and all that, what, what other things do you think people are anxious about? I think right now people are worried about health issues. Like people are worried to get COVID-19 and people are also afraid that they are the carrier that if they have it but not know it they will pass it on to other people and when people get uh, COVID-19 there is not enough doctors or hospital beds because right now the medical um, field uh, the hospitals and the doctors are overwhelmed with this uh, taking care of patients right now and also people that we know started to pass away because of this COVID-19 and because of all this worried about health um, because of worried and anxiety sometimes people can get sick also physically just because of worry and anxiety that's right so I thought maybe we can in, uh, talk to people who actually went through all this uh, situation even by contracting the virus 
Uh, you remember Peter Cupis, for some of you who were with us, uh, he came to JICF as a guest speaker on February 23rd to speak in our Sunday services. And um, he contracted the virus and he was tested positive and admitted to ho the hospital before that. So let's go to Peter and ask him to share some of his uh, experience. Uh, so Peter, you came to Indonesia for the sake of the gospel and you end up catching COVID-19. Can you please share with us what went through your mind during all this time? Through my whole time of having the coronavirus or being diagnosed with COVID-19, God gave me a remarkable peace through the whole thing. Uh, part of that was because by the time I was diagnosed as having the coronavirus, I was already improving significantly. So that certainly played a role. Uh, but there were some other things too as well. When I went to the hospital for, when I got admitted there, I wasn't admitted for COVID-19. I was admitted for dengue fever. And once I was in the hospital, they said I also had a septic infection, that I had sepsis. So if you look up sepsis on the internet, you'll find it's a lot more serious than dengue fever or the coronavirus. It's a lot more uh, likely to kill you. So that certainly caused me some alarm, but there was a few things that really God gave me uh, that allowed me to be, have peace through that as well. One was that at a younger age in life, God told me that he was gonna use my life to reach people with the gospel through apologetics. And I knew that couldn't happen if I suddenly died in a hospital in Indonesia. So that was helpful. I also knew that I was in a modern hospital with doctors who were well-trained and uh, modern medicine, so that was good. I knew there was a lot of people praying for me, so that was of great comfort too as well. But I also uh, had Dr. Teddy come in from JICF, come and visit me in the hospital while I was sick, before they suspected I had the coronavirus. And I remember talking with him about my sepsis, and he said, I don't think you have sepsis. You're too coherent. You make too much sense when you talk. So that also helped me feel good because I realized I either uh, didn't, maybe didn't even have sepsis or I wasn't at an advanced stage where it was really life-threatening. So all of those things were things that God used to comfort me and help me. And I guess I also just really am convinced the Holy Spirit has worked in my life and convinced me the gospel is true. And because it's true that I know God will bring uh, good out of every difficult and trying situation we're in and, and he gave me a trust in him um, through my whole experience. Well thank you so much Peter for sharing your story. Indeed as God's people we know that he's sovereign over all things. Mm -hmm. uh, we need not worry or be anxious as we know God is working out his perfect plan, even when we don't fully comprehend everything. Your testimony, Peter, reminds me of the first in the letter Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians. Uh, this is from Philippians 4, starting with verse 6, where it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Also, in verse 8, he says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. I guess this is the admonition for us as believers in Christ that we don't worry, not because we think positively about things, but we know that God is fully in charge and fully in control. And we can think about good things because we know that He is the giver of all good things. And I also think that God allows this COVID-19 to happen all around the world. Um, I think that is just God's severe grace and mercy to humankind. It's like He is giving us a wake-up call that um, to remind us that life is fleeting, that He alone is God and we are not self-sufficient. And sooner or later, we will die. And uh, we need to uh, follow the footstep of Apostle Paul to be able to say, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain in Philippians 1, 21. 
So right now, um, we are treating death as, as the enemy that we need to avoid at all costs. Probably, this is the good time for us to reflect. Has my life been Christ all of these years? Maybe the reason that I'm not ready to die now because my life is not about Christ. So not right now probably is the pause button that God is giving us the grace that we can reflect on, upon our lives. How has we been living our life? And moving on past Corona, probably we should live for Christ so that we can be ready and we consider death as a gain. And I think Hendra also that uh, God allowing this COVID-19 to happen to sanctify us. That's right. Because uh, during crisis, our true self come out, right? When I just told my story that when I'm anxious, when I'm worried, I focus on myself. That's right. So during this time, I think God also wants to purify our, uh, our faith and deepen our trust in Him. And hopefully from this week, we will, God will uh, prune and mold our character to focus on others more than focus on ourselves, even during this crisis time. So maybe we can uh, think about some practical suggestion for our audience. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the things that they can do besides being fearful and worried all the time? I can think of some of uh, practical suggestions. The first one and the uh, most important thing is to meditate upon scripture. And I just want to highlight Psalm 27. Psalm 27 has been um, an encouragement uh, to me. Uh, let me read it from first one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? May the Lord be the uh, fortress and uh, shelter during this time where we are afraid. And not only Psalm uh, 27, we can meditate on Psalm 23, um, Psalm 73, Psalm 103, and uh, many more Psalms that we can take more time as we're staying home more. We have extra time. We can just take this and read it and meditate and let it uh, soak our mind and give us the strength. And the second one that I can think through is to keep the sleep time and waking up time, right? Because we're staying home, the tendency, at least my tendency is to sleep late and to wake up late. But yeah, especially <laughs> if you're trying to catch all the news late That's night. That's right. right. And the more we catch up news at night, it makes us more Stress and anxious and cannot go to sleep at night. That is a bad idea, actually. So um, keep the discipline to sleep early, to wake up early. Um, Psalm 127 verse 2 says that God, sleep, God gives sleep to those he loves. So sleep is actually surrender, right? When we go to sleep, it's actually we are surrendering to God. And it's good for our soul and it's good for our body. Maybe suggestion more from you? Well, for me, I think exercising is definitely something that we should do because we are uh, confined to our home. Um, I think if you have gym in your uh, apartment, uh, like us, we have swimming pool, uh, look for time when there's not a lot of people in there. And mm -hmm. our apartment is taking really good care to make sure that all the Equipments are being sanitized uh, routinely and frequently. Uh, another suggestion would be perhaps uh, connect with people, not by visiting them, of course, during this time, but with technology available, we can still connect mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. You know, we today text a lot. Sometimes we forgot that uh, there are times when we actually need to make voice call with a personal touch. Uh, we forgot already in those uh, olden days where most of the time when we want to connect with people, we, we pick up the phone mm -hmm. and call them. Perhaps mm -hmm. this is now a time again for us to pick up those uh, old uh, ways of communication mm -hmm. because uh, conversation that is interactional, uh, it's, it's really, really much needed. We are created as social beings, so connecting with one another during this time through technology, I think it is still very much uh, uh, a good way for us to, to 
uh, and yeah. practical uh, ways yeah. of, of coping yeah. with the situation. I agree with you, Hendra, when you mentioned about exercise. For some of us who are already cooped up at home for two weeks, um, probably some of us already feel uh, depressed uh, because we don't see people and we're cooped up at home and we don't have the sun exposure. We, we were lacking vitamin D <laughs> and that can create depression. So going out, even in your own front yard or backyard, uh, get some sunshine and to exercise can lift up the mood uh, of depression. Another suggestion that I would like to give is that read good books during this time. We have plenty of time, right? But then um, the tendency is that we want to watch movies, Korean drama or Netflix to escape the reality. That is a bad idea actually. Uh, during this time, do not consume Netflix or Korean drama. Well, you already have access to right now media. I think we should start uh, doing maybe self-study, uh, doing um, through right now media and read good books that will build uh, our faith and knowing God more and that will help us during this time. Well, maybe at this time it's good to go back to Peter and uh, ask him another question. Maybe he has some practical suggestions or just thoughts that, that he can share with us. So, Peter, um, do you have words of advice for people who perhaps have loved ones contracting the virus or people who fear and anxious that they might get one? What should they do? There are some Christians who will tell you you don't have to worry about getting an illness or the coronavirus, COVID-19, because God will protect Christians who are faithful to him and who trust him and will prevent us from getting any kind of illness. But that's simply not true. That's not what scripture says. Uh, Jesus says clearly in John chapter 16 that in this world we will have trouble and that if we are faithful followers of Jesus, we will experience persecution, we will experience suffering. So the reality is in this coming months or maybe even years, it's entirely possible that we can be faithful to Jesus, obedient to him, and yet still get ill, still contract the coronavirus. Um, well, if we realize though that suffering and illness is a normal part of the Christian life, then that can actually make it much easier to deal with it. Because if you think that you're not going to have any suffering in this world or any pain, then when that happens, it becomes very disturbing. You think there's something wrong or there's somehow God is angry at you or somehow your, your eternal life is at stake or something like that. But when you realize that this world includes suffering, that we can face illness either for ourselves or other people, we can go through that time with a lot more uh, patience, with a lot more peace in our heart and a lot more uh, love for God and for people around us. There's a few things that we really should keep in mind when we go through difficult situations. One is in John chapter 16, immediately after Jesus says that we will have trouble in this world, he says, but take heart because I have overcome this world. And that's important for us to realize. In the end, Jesus wins. God is sovereign and nothing happens out of his control. And no matter how bad things get in this world, we know that ultimately Jesus wins in the end. There's also some comforting truths in Romans chapter 8. In that chapter, it says that the suffering of this world does not even compare to the glory that one day will be. The suffering of this world has no comparison to the glory that will be revealed in eternity. Uh, it, this life is just like a blink of the eye or a flash of light compared to eternity. It might seem so hard and difficult right now, but it really is just a small moment in time compared to all of our life in all of eternity. We need to stay focused on eternity, not on the temporary things of this world. And lastly, in Romans chapter 8, it also says that to those who love God, he causes all things to work together for good. And that's something we need to trust. We need to trust that God is good and that whatever happens in our life, whether it's illness, whether it's a coronavirus or whatever it is, 
that God has a good reason for allowing that and that he's using that in our lives to purify us, to draw him to him, draw us to him. So if we stay focused on eternity and realize that God is working in our lives through all the hardships that we're doing, then that really allows us to go through these difficult difficulties in a way that honors and glorifies God. We don't always know exactly why God is allowing something at the moment, but we need to trust that he has a good reason. We need to ask, what is God teaching us in this whole thing? I hope that's of comfort to you. I know it comforts me. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for the reminder and words of encouragement that surely can help strengthen all of us in the current situation. Mimi, do you have anything to add as we wrap up today's uh, chat? I just want to give an encouragement again from Psalm 27 to all of you that this, uh, hopefully that this, the Word of God can give us hope for uh, the future that we all can get through this difficult time together. Uh, verse 13 to 14, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Well, in closing, let me just say this. Remember, God is fully in control of the whole situation. He is not surprised by what is going on around us. Second, pray. Pray for people affected by the current situation. Those who are infected, uh, as well as those people who are perhaps in a situation where they might lose their job or already lost their job. And also we should pray for each other, for the strengthening of God, that we can continue to do His will in the midst of the current situation. And also don't forget that we should follow our government's instruction. God has given authority to our government to govern the, our daily lives. So we must heed to what they say in order for us to continue to be safe and cut short of the current situation. We hope you enjoyed today's session and that it has blessed and encouraged you. See you next Thursday for our next midweek chat. Have a great week of worship.